Now, in, I think just sign up at somebody new the other day. We got about 43 different people in the group doing the True Quantum Healing course. And everybody is finding a lot of different things. I, Christian, wonderful guy. That guy is funny as heck. I love him. He's in Croatia. He's always sending me things that he's finding. And they're really interesting. And some of them really spark an idea. Everybody's got a certain type of, let's say, mindset they follow, a certain type of energies that they kind of hone in on. Yep. What do you find are the, the biggies that you work with? Really have gone into researching all sorts of different entities. I stick mostly with the stressor charts with you, but I've also made a huge entity. It's my black book, and it has about three or 4,000 entities. Wow. So if I get stuck and I can't find anything, then I'll go refer to that chart. It has all the Egyptian gods, has all the Greek gods, it has... All the aliens has all the Klepothic, Goatian entities. It's a little overboard, but I do go use that when I'm really stuck trying to find that thing that is really irritating someone. <laughs> Every time I talk with somebody, somebody says a word and it sticks with me and it's something I need to pay attention to. What this guy in the hot tub mentioned, what, talked about aliens, was yeah. mineral-based aliens. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, as we are carbon-based. So if there's a mineral-based entity, they need minerals to wow. sustain their lives. Yes. And uh, what my philosophy now is, is that these mineral-based entities are feeding off the minerals in our bodies. Absolutely. I find that they also can steal our manifestation and they siphon. So that's why we find ourselves not doing very well if we have an attachment is because they are taking basically our, some of our life force and our manifestation. And I try to clear some of that out and it works really good. So you find that they're not just taking our energy, our minerals, but they're also, if we manifest something, like these, these beings can't manifest, not like we do anyway. No, not like not, we are manifestors. We are the, the pure magic and they don't have it like we do. And when they are in the astral world looking at us, they know how powerful and radiant we are. So they know to siphon that energy. And a lot of us don't know that. So we are not utilizing our manifestation correctly for ourselves or for assisting mankind or humanity. So they know how to take that energy. So if you're trying to manifest something that's just not working, you say, hey, Chris, I thought you said I can manifest things. What's going on here? It's possible that manifestation is getting hijacked. Absolutely. Well, it's even probably a little more sinister than that. If you're chronically ill and sick, your life force is being sucked over to something else and then being used for something dark. And so if you can find that, thing or where that's coming from and return their manifestation energy you can find a lot of their healing goes just real quick yeah if you could douse out the manifestation that is being hijacked yep yep you can dial in a bit more when we're doing this work it sounds like we're living out a, a bit of a fantasy of sorts or writing a book feeding off of a, a movie script or something like that and there it is very fanciful okay to say the least to sit here eight hours a day five days a week and play with a pendulum and say words through a pyramid onto somebody in denmark I mean, <laughs> get wrap your head around <laughs> yeah. that, okay? The reality is, if you can identify something that is bothering you, an entity, if you can identify the entity, is it Anubis? Is it Azazel? I'm finding lots of Azazel lately, guys. Oh, okay, gosh, like, that guy. Very popular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good for that bastard, all right? <laughs> Let's put it into perspective. Mm -hmm. Doing this work, let's call it the law of identification for a, something to call it. So if you identify something, it's like playing hide and seek. One, two, three, untie, but it's really Nora. Nora is not caught. Same thing in the universe, in the energy realms, is if you identify it precisely or at least within a certain parameter, it has to leave. So if you take a room full of people, you want somebody to leave, you say, okay, leave, get out of here. And everybody's like, what? Who? Who do you want to leave? Let's say you in the front row with the green shirt leave, <laughs> then that person knows they got to leave. So you identifying it is really the key with all this work. If uh, you just say, oh, there's an entity, let's get rid of the entity. Well, there could be 50 entities. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So the identification is key. And that's where a lot of people, Christian, Nicola, 
everybody comes up with a lot of interesting findings of, of what things could be because we have we're humans we have monkey minds we need to visualize and try and understand within our consciousness what's going on here and once it's in your consciousness and you realize what and understand what it is boom it's gone the manifestation has taken place and it's gone yep quite often when i if i find something new within two days it doesn't exist anymore because it's been cleared out it's come into consciousness yes exactly interesting work that's the big difference between doing a clearing and something leading than coming back okay if you if you identify it more precisely it's not going to come back because now it's been put into consciousness it is now we got some questions many questions are pointing to dna the question is does working with the stones organite activate the junk dna strands hmm is that doing anything for junk DNA or the empty DNA? I would say that if I went through my crystal book and looked at which specific crystals would do that, I would put it on my plate organite. And then, yes, absolutely. The last person I worked on today, he's writing a big test. He's going to wants to get his class two license. And he says, can you help mem my memory? I says, let's go there. And I started doing some clearings. Ooh. And I was told to activate his empty DNA within his brain. Wow. It's just a matter of making the intent to do it. Yep. Very yep. good. That's, that it, sounds awesome. Our intent is so freaking powerful. Yep. All we got to do is will it and not doubt it. <laughs> not doubt it. If, if you doubt it, most of just throw it away, keep walking. But if you intend it and you will it and you know it's going to work and you have that confidence in that intent, it's going to happen. It's going to happen to certain degrees, okay, but it's going to happen. It's going to activate certain parts of that open DNA. That junk DNA, they call it, is just open space on the hard drive in your computer. Wow. Well, it's yeah. really all it is. If you want to get Agreed. your money it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a concept that you really have to put it into terminology and dumb it down. Number one, people need to understand what's happening. When I'm working with a client and I'm going to remove this entity out of the brain's governing subconscious out of their astral body, they're like, what the heck is that? I would try to explain that to them, but they have to understand it. So trying to dumb things down does make a very big difference on the whole band scheme of things. Yes. Ty. Yes, sir. Do angels exist? Mm. <laughs> oh, right. I do not resonate with using the word angels because I looked up the Latin of what that means, and it means dragon or serpent. And yes, they that? exist. How about that? I always use true assistance beings. That's what I use to separate from the nonsense, fake, false assistance beings. So that's what that's the wording I use. It seems to be important because English language is made by magicians. It's a magical language. So we, we try to say things as correctly as we can. So the words you choose, they do make a difference. Yeah. If I'm clearing something out, if I use the word denounce, it's a very powerful word. It's very specific. The more specific the words are, the better the clearing is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I will kind of little maybe a little too much but i'll look up the etymology of most words i use frequently and see if there's any nonsense involved and then if i find something i just won't use it especially in healing a lot of people ask me about their guides a lot of people use the chart system that we have we, we use a letter chart a to z letter chart and if you can get that letter chart to talk to, and talk specific and and make sense then you know you're doing well, okay? But a lot of people will try and use that letter chart and get mumbo-jumbo. They'll get five different sentences in one. There's a lot of confusion. That's because there's a lot of spirits trying to jump in, chime in, and give you some answers. Right. Absolutely. What I've done, I've fired all my spirit guides. <laughs> Good job. And what I'm doing now is I'm intending my soul. When I ask a question, my, it, the intent is that my soul goes into the future finds the answer and brings it back. That's very clean and brilliant. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, because that's the one thing I can trust. Yes. Yeah. You, um, can, you can trust yourself and your highest self all the time, you know? Your soul has to have the right connection. Now, I find a lot of is that our soul can either be connected to the dark, connected to the light. 
Yep. You, you yep. Your soul could be born of a satanic nature or an uh-huh. Arcturian nature, okay? Whereas now, no matter what you do, you're always going to be giving your energy and, and everything to the Arcturians, to the dark side, whatever right. you want to call it. If you know this and you, you make the disconnects from the dark, from the Arcturians, and you connect it to source, all it's as simple as saying, my soul source true, boom. Now you've got a direct connect to knowledge that you're looking for, not hoaxes, not lies, not bull ding. It's actual knowledge that you need. So if, once you've done all that stuff, done those connections, now the answers are going to be clean and clear. Absolutely. And I, this is why I love this uh, quantum healing because it, uh, if you are in the dark tone and you know this, uh, this is a way to clear and purify yourself and get to that uh, more divine self, more highest self. Basically, it, when you're in school and you have a geometry question, you don't want to go to the phys ed teacher and ask that question. You want to go t- to the right source to get that answer so ultimately the right connections are important and again it's just a matter of making the intent my soul source true my subconscious source true my consciousness source true just saying those words how much power is there in words ty the bible starts off with that there was the word first thing in the bible (laughs) Now, another big thing I'm starting to find a lot of is we look for a lot of gods. The Egyptian gods, Greek gods, they're a bunch of assholes, okay? They're just, I don't know what they're here for. But look for lords. (laughs) (laughs) Look for lords. The lord, the dark lord of the Arcturians, that is Satan. If you you want to give Satan an identity, that's who and what it is. The dark lord of the Arcturians is basically what I would consider Satan. We're boiling everything right down to what it really is. These Arcturians, these reptilians, now the reptilians in the universe, their name is the U, Y-I-W. That's how they're identified in the universe. We identify them as reptilians because they look like freaking reptiles. Right. So if you can uh, find out that proper name for them, that that will work a lot better. Looking for a lot of lords. I work a lot with uh, the Lord of Sacred Geometry. Every, any time that something needs repair work within a person's body, within the energy matrix, within your eyes, whatever, something needs repair work, I ask the Lord of Sacred Geometry to do it. It, it seems to work pretty darn good. Wow. Awesome. Lots of helpers out there. But again, you have to know really who uh, who's going to help you, who's going to be there, uh, who's got your back. So I'm very, very specific. If, if something comes into my consciousness, that, like when the Lord of Sacred Geometry came up, I was like, okay, who is this guy? <laughs> Let's read his resume and see who he's all about. I let it sit for a while before I used it. It kept on coming up, coming up. Then I asked, okay, who are you? And he says, well, I am the Lord of Sacred Geometry. You're using Sacred Geometry. I'm here to help you. Wow. So we put it into play. It keeps on coming up, and it's making changes. Great. And having fun. Too. Meeting new people all the time. This work is fascinating. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I love to, say, it. to say the least. The interesting thing is that there is new stuff all the time coming up. You're learning new things all the time. Stuff about organites, stuff about actual physical problems. I'm always doing research on working on the energetic stuff, all the entities, all of the universal connections and all that type of thing. But there's also the, the medical, the physical. Mm-hmm. That you can learn a lot about, you know, working a lot with, with people, autism, finding out all these, you know, there's a lot of doctors doing research, working in the vagus nerve system, working on these different things. So when you combine the two, when you do a clearing of the energy stuff and then get into the physical stuff, that's when the real magic starts to happen. Yes. If you're doing this type of work, don't just keep yourself in a paradigm of the energy. Move over and also into the physical medical stuff because there's a lot to know. There's a lot of interesting stuff, interesting findings that are going on. A lot of it is bolding, but a lot of it is is real-time stuff that you need to know about. You know, working within people with, let's say, elevated blood pressure or elevated heart rate it's not always something to do with the heart you look in the midbrain and see what's going on there and that leads to a whole new different set of findings so you, you really have to keep open-minded know what you're, you're, you're looking for research research you can't do enough research yes absolutely when uh chris when you did a clearing on him and you had uh told me i had gout 
um, and you cleared some energy for me. It really assisted me. And, and then I started just uh, following a, a nice diet to assist me so I don't continue uh, getting that pain. And that was very powerful because doctors for many years didn't know what was going on with me. I just kept on going to the hospital and had back pains and this type of pain. And when you told, when you you uh, figured it out that I had gout, wow, it changed my life. Because now I know that I can control that pain and I don't have to uh, have it with me. Gout is a very common problem with them, people. It's, it's uric acid crystal in the body, and it's it's making tiny little cuts into the connective tissue and, and then into the muscles. It hurts like heck. Another big thing I find a lot of, a radio show on my last show was Dr. Eliezer. He talked a lot about live blood analysis, which is what I do in my office, and he's, he's talking about some of the things you can see on the, the sample, and one of them is carbonic acid. Okay. And I, there's one of the words that popped into my head, carbonic acid. i got to pay attention to that. I researched it and found that it is a gas that is created from the lungs. When you exhale, it's, it creates an acid. So if this carbonic acid builds up in your body, that's going to cause a lot of different joint problems, muscle problems, aches and pains. So that has been something very common I'm finding within a lot of people. Once you clear out all the energy goop, get into the physical, there is, for most cases, a lot of carbonic acid, uric acid, lactic acid, all these different buildup of, of acids in our body. It lowers your pH. It makes all these different environments in your body. And if you can learn where it builds up, how to get rid of it, what enzyme the person is, there's, there's a lot to do with it. Then you're doing a lot better than just saying, bad guy, go away. You really got to get into the whole concept of the physical. Yes, absolutely. Uh, have you ever seen on the internet the Chesterhedron? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm getting tons of big hits to start using the Chesterhedron. I do have one. I ordered wow. one. Okay, I have one, but when I went on holidays, I gave it to a friend who said, I'm going to try and make one. Okay, you can even get the pattern, the PDF pattern. Yep. Uh, the guy who designed it, he's like, here, it's open source. Everybody make one. I'm That's getting awesome. tons of hits to start using it. Well, I have one right in my here, but it right in my hand, but it's, you know, it's with org. with our orgon material, right? So take that chestahedron and spin it. Oh, it becomes a bell or a heart shape. You spin that thing, and that activates. Oh, wow! I can feel it. Right. That's like a peaceful energy to it. Very good. That's what we want to be. We want to be in an energy of peace right now. We want to get away from the gods of war. We want to get away from all that war, hate energy, and, and bring in the love energy. And that's what this was going to do. Now, we use a, something called the Vesica Pisces, which is the divine feminine. Now that we're in the divine feminine and all is locked in, now we need to go to a, a tool. That's awesome. I like it. <laughs> Does that resonate with you, Ty? Yeah, that sounds yes. fun. <laughs> One of the things I've been doing with um, the Vesca Pisces is putting um, different stones in a little pouch to make it temporary, but playing with using that as an amplification. And I have done some clearing with my chestahedron by putting it on the, uh, the side towards me and then saying the commands to give it a, a boost, really. 